Hello there everyone, Danny TCV, the Crooner Violin here, and welcome to a brand new episode of Chatterbox. So today, what I want to talk about is bullying. Specifically kind of the way that we deal with it, and by deal with it, I mean we do not deal with it. This is something of a rather personal subject to me in the first place, in general. And I've already done a podcast type of thing, what I call the Let's Talk on my other channel, Macam and uh, I will definitely be linking that video podcast down in the in the description below, and I will also be linking it for sure um, in the upper right hand corner in the cards, which is that little eye icon that shows up sometimes up in the upper right hand corner. Because I also have a very very uh, personal connection to the whole school topic and the way that schools are work in the United States around here and how abhorrently shitty they are. And long story short, why I will never say, stay in school, kids, like all these other people do. Because it really is not worth anybody's time, to be sure. And if you want to know why I believe that, and you know, how I come about explaining that to everybody so they understand basically all my peeves and problems with the school system and why it's just bunk as hell and a waste of time for kids growing up and wasting their time away to be kids and discover who they are. Yeah, again, just be sure to go down below and to the description and go click on that video that is linked there. In elementary school, I was bullied from first grade all the way through, I'd say, halfway through fifth grade. And long story short, just with some context, I got into a mainstream elementary school halfway through first grade. And it really didn't start picking up until, I'd say really halfway through second grade is really where the bullying really started to ramp up and be noticeable and get kind of aggressive. So I was bullied for a long time and I suffered pretty much every kind of bullying. I got bullied for, oh, I got when I got bullied, it was one specific bully almost always. It was like the main bully of the entire school and they, with bullies, usually they have a favorite person to bully and pick on and that happened to be me in the entire school. Um, at the time and they would physically and emotionally and mentally so basically in other words physically and verbally just bully the shit out of me so basically tear me down and beat the shit out of me literally all because they could basically that's how bullies work usually they have no reason to bully they just do it because for some reason they get a kick out of the pointless you know abuse that they uh, let out on people. So I went to the the nurse quite frequently throughout that time, especially between third and fourth grades. I was going there constantly because of the fact that the bully got real aggressive physically at those points, and he would always love to sucker punch me basically right at the base of my rib cage where the diaphragm is and everything, and the stomach is just. Ugh. And of course I got punched in the face a lot too, but their main favorite place to punch me was the definitely the base of the ribcage and the stomach. Eventually my parents just got so fed up with them not doing jack shit about it that they end up going down and talking personally to the principal herself, which her name is Diane, by the way. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, and she basically told us, all three of us, so what do you want me to do about it? In other words, you can go fuck yourself. I don't care. I'm not going to do anything. And after that, she started actually reprimanding me and literally punishing me each time I went in and reported bullying to the office. And so anytime I went into the nurse, and it was for the fact that I had basically been sucker punched aggressively in my stomach and or my face... It would be because of bullying, because you have to tell them, well, what, what exactly happened? Like, how did this happen if you knew? And obviously I did, because I got fucking sucker punched all the time uh, against a rock and concrete wall. <laughs> Each time, just about, every single time, I would report that to the nurse. Of course, they have to report it to the basically the administration, and thus the principals, vice and lead. Diane was, of course, the main principal. And she would always end up reprimanding me for that. Basically, in other words, you know, the whole snitches get stitches thing, or 
In other words, basically stop reporting because I don't fucking care and I'm not going to do anything about it. And I want you to learn your lesson to not to never report bully you getting bullied again because I don't fucking care. Is basically what it is. And I would shut up about this. And I wouldn't. But, yeah. Anyway, so shortly after that whole meeting, at the end of recess, after the course of the bell rang and we were supposed to go back into our classes after uh, lunch, that's when the bully would always end up taking me right at the corner of the wall near next to the doors, and they would always beat the crap out of me and, you know, verbally rip me apart. And when that occurred this time around shortly after the uh meeting happened like it was a few days after the principal vice principal and two teachers decided that they would literally be standing and waiting across the wall ball court outside directly in sight line within i'd say about like 15 feet of where i get bullied all the time because I told them specifically where it happens and when it happens. So they were out there literally to watch it as if it was like some WWE thing. And so they all stand there and they watch me get sucker punched and verbally uh, uh, bullied at the same time by this one bully. And they just stand there and watch it. And they even were grinning. And then afterward, Diane steps forward and says, What? What do you expect me to do about it? I can't and I won't do anything about it. Go to class. That was it. In other words, go fuck yourself. We don't care. We don't fucking care. Like, how twisted is that? And the reason why I talk about this experience I had is because of the fact that, and why I want to talk about this topic in general, is because as of late, especially after the last, after the last uh, I'd say like these last two months, there's been a, a decent sized wave of kids that die due to the bullying that they've experienced. And it's not like I'm saying they die because of suicide, which definitely happens even more frequently than because of the physical abuse. But it's a wave of kids that are dying due to the physical bullying they're experiencing. So the punches, mainly sucker punches, but also kicks and things like that. And there's not only a girl who died because of it but there's some boy who died recently because when he got sucker punched so hard his head smashed into his concrete beam and it caused such a severe brain bleed and wound that he died in transit to the hospital and the parents have to then fight the damn school districts teachers principals the actual school itself therefore the administration of said school and school district to get compensation for it and get them to actually finally give a fuck and actually do something about it. But the answer they always get is we're not going to do anything and you basically, without saying it directly in these words, you can go fuck yourself. Fuck you. Fuck your kid. We don't fucking care. Basically is what their responses are. If they were bluntly honest and had no filter, that's exactly what they would say. Fuck your kid. Fuck everybody else's kids. Fuck you guys, and we don't give a fuck that your kid lost their life to a bully. It's not our fucking problem. So fuck you for thinking you should care. Is literally what all these school districts say across the nation these days. And that is beyond words how unacceptable that is. And how wrong and like immorally fucked up that is. How can we... How, how can we be just be sit, sitting idly by and be like, this is fine? They're kids. They'll learn. They're kids. They made a mistake. They're kids. They probably didn't know what they were doing. They're too young to know that they were going to kill somebody. Insert all these fucking excuses here. I got that when I was a fucking kid. And because it was against a rock and concrete wall, where it was ultra uneven surfaces, and the rocks were sticking way out from the actual concrete base of the walls. And I was always against pushed against the wall, and then forced to be clunked, basically the, my back and my body clenched against the wall while I got sucker punched and hit all the time. Both the front of my head would be, and my face would be punched a lot of the time, and thus the back of my head would smash into these rocks and concrete. Like, if you think about it, and of course the ground is fucking concrete, and then you have metal frames everywhere. Like, if you think about it, 
I could have been and ended up as one of those kids that ended up dying due to a traumatic injury because of being bullied. And I damn well know that the school district as is, is a whole would have literally basically said, as again, in, without saying it literally without a filter like this, we don't fucking care. We don't fucking care about your kid dying to bullying. We don't fucking care about the bully, and we don't fucking care about any of the other kids. We don't fucking care about you, and we're not going to give a fuck and do any jack shit about any of this. Because we fucking can't. They always say we can't. We can't do anything. We can't do anything. We can't do anything. Why? They're kids. They're kids. They're kids. And then there's always these hyper-protective parents. They're like, even if your kid, this kid killed the other kid, they probably didn't know what they were doing. Because look, they're like 12. They're 13. They're, they're 9. They, they don't know what they're doing. They're, so it would be too cruel to charge this kid with a crime for murdering another kid. They didn't know what they were doing. Bullshit they don't know what they're doing. Here's the fact of the matter. It doesn't matter how young or old a kid is. Most kids are way more intuitive and incredibly more intelligent and self-aware, even aware of life and what they're doing, than almost any parents out there will give their kids credit for. Even the most suck-up parents don't give their kids a lot of times enough credit for how really intuitive, aware, and intelligent they are. So many kids, even down to like six, seven, they have incredible amounts of awareness and intelligence to them. They might not take actions that would show that. They a lot of times they'll make they'll ch make choices and do actions that would show and try to prove the opposite of like, oh, we're fucking stupid, because they're kids. That's kind of how kids work. They're more fun oriented than they are practicality oriented. So obviously. They're going to take a lot more risks and do a lot more stupid things for fun than they are ever going to care about, you know, intelligent decision making and practicality. Like, obviously. But that doesn't mean they're stupid. Their actions, you know, the whole actions speak louder than the words thing would argue, oh, well, then they are stupid. No, they're not. They know what they're doing. Almost not every kid, but obviously most kids, even at the, if they're literally even if they're six years old, will know 90% of what they're doing. And 90% of the time, we'll know exactly what the possible outcomes will be. But they don't care because it's fun to them. The point being, most kids, especially the, each year you get older, the more intelligent, the more intuitive, the more aware they are. And they just don't get the proper credits for that. Because parents are like, oh, they don't know because they're still developing. Because biology says, who cares what biology says? You're going by these scripts and these books and these expectations and applying it to every single person out there that's under 18 or under 15 or whatever age group they're a part of. And that's not right because everybody is different. And when you're a kid and a teen, that's your peak of self-development and growth. So you're going to you know, be trying to find yourself and who you are and what you believe and how you feel about things and what lenses and perspectives you're going to be able to see and interpret life through and how you quantify things your way and just endless amount of other things. Obviously, you have to worry about you know, what job they're going to get or what they want to get, what, they want to, what their goals are in life and all this other stuff. I mean, there's already so much on their plate that they're always thinking about and considering, but in general, a lot of it's subconscious until they really get up into their late teens, and that's when a lot of the subconscious thoughts start to become really forward and front-facing and conscious in the front of their head. Like, okay, I gotta, I gotta pay attention to this now. But it's always developing, it's always growing, no matter what age they are. So, it shows actually how naive adults are parents are about their own kids and about a lot of everybody else's kids but so point being i don't care if a if a nine-year-old punches and kills uh another nine-year-old or a seven-year-old or a 14-year-old or like they know what they're doing they damn well know they just killed somebody and they know that that's they know that that's bad they know that the question is do they give a fuck do they care and how arrogant they're going to be when they know that there's going to be all these people saying, well, they didn't know what they were doing. And, of course, they're not going to say anything because they feel guilty. And, they're, of course, they're going to be like, yeah, I totally didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, yeah, no, you fucking did. And you know they fucking do know. 
And my reason for mentioning all that is because it's inexcusable that we aren't doing a damn thing about this. Just because they're kids. Insert all the excuses here because they're not 18 yet. So they don't know what they're doing. They're just stupid. They weren't aware. They weren't thinking. Bullshit. They know exactly what they're doing. They just don't give a fuck. So, again, point for mentioning all that is because not only is it that we're not doing anything, it's just fucking unacceptable, but at the same time, these kids have to be punished harshly for it. They have to be. Especially if they're maiming and or literally killing other kids. I don't care how old they are. They can literally be seven years old. They need to be charged, at least as a juvenile, with crimes that they've committed, if not more, and imprisoned. And the reason why they need to do that is because, one, it's the right thing to do, obviously, and two is the fact that that way, with the kids, hopefully what you're going to be doing is you're actually going to be using the prison system, the justice system, to actually rehabilitate, which was the pro the whole point of the jails and prison systems in the first place that's why they're called departments of department of corrections because it's correcting actions it's correcting their way of thinking it's correcting their life it's you know it's yeah that's the entire point it's rehabilitation that's exactly what the point always was and it was supposed to always be until profiteering came into play, next thing you know, everything, you know, dominance, now everything's all about punishment, harsh punishment, and basically tearing those people down too, bullying the shit out of them, making them feel worthless, which then they wonder why they become lifelong criminals. Well, what the fuck did you expect, you idiot? It's supposed to be for rehabilitation, and so for the, the kids... That end up being charged and imprisoned, hopefully, in the future, as in doing the right thing. To the full extent of the law, charging them, even if it is a juvenile. To be able to then dedicate a lot of time and resources to each of these kids to rehabilitate them. Quote-unquote, correct to them. Try to do what you can to, to fix them, I guess. And... Don't get me wrong, because obviously I know full and well that at least half of kids who bully experience the exact same if not far more severe versions of their bullying their abuse they're giving other kids back at home with their parents and or guardians i already know that full and well it's at least half for sure of bullies go through the same shit usually more severe at home with their parents or guardians which is why they end up doing that is it's like a an innate instinctive build and in, in, in mechanism inside of a lot of people. And it's kind of like defense, but except you're also venting by doing the same thing to other people. And, you know, you're impressionable at that age, so obviously you're just in such chaos that all you can feel like you can do to make you feel better is to go out and do the same thing that's happening to you to other kids, to other people. That's why, like, at least half of bullies end up becoming bullies in the first place and doing the same things. It's because it's the trauma coming out sideways and backwards and turned around because they literally have no idea how the fuck else to deal with it. They just don't fucking know. Like, they need a juvenile fight club or something, like, legitimately, to be able to, for some of these kids, to be able to, I guess... You could say if you could legalize it rather than doing it underground to be able to help them vent and be able to help them, uh, I guess, kind of feel better. Just to get all that, that trauma and that stress and that horror and that fear and that anger and all that stuff out. That hurt and that pain so that you can, you know, and then at the same time you're learning self-defense. You're learning how to strength, you know, you're strengthening your body, you're exercising consistently. I mean, there is a lot of benefits, just like a lot of negatives to that. Because you never know how the hell that's going to end up making that person become. But that wouldn't be a bad idea. But that wasn't the point I was going on. <laughs> uh, uh, I took off onto my own analogy. Anyway, but no, they need to be rehabilitated, obviously. They need that kind of dedication. But unlike the American school system, they actually need full force adaptability. So the people that are working with them to rehabilitate them and try to reprogram their minds and everything to be able to stop being so fearful and stop being so violent and everything else and try to release that trauma is 
to obviously, you know, when you're rehabilitating them to adapt to their needs and to, add, to adapt to the way they learn and adapt to the way they think, the way they're wired mentally and all this other stuff. So that once you gain all that insight and that kind of inter- understanding and that kind of broader picture of who they are at that moment and like where their mind's at and how they go about quantifying and understanding things and learning things and all that. That's the way you have to rehabilitate. Let alone teach people. That's the way you need to rehabilitate people, especially kids. And so you have to have fully dedicated, knowledgeable people that are really intuitive and are able to connect with these kids and be able to figure out how they work, how they think, how they understand and quantify, you know, how they think and the experiences they've had and how they release how how differently you can get them to release their their stresses and their fears and their trauma and stuff and be able to feel you know help them empower themselves in a way that's not you know wrong like that like really violent and brutal that's what you got to do while they're imprisoned like optimally they're going to be imprisoned they're going to be fully charged but you're still going to be able the point of it isn't to punish them so much as it is to rehabilitate them you know so obviously there's always a little bit of punishment to it because you're imprisoned but at the very least, you have a dedicated, you know, set of peop- workers that are there to spend time, a lot of time individually with each of these people, these kids, and be able to figure out all that stuff. So that then you can adapt to that specific person and all of those traits about them and quirks, so that that way you can accurately and properly rehabilitate them. That's the entire point, you know. So that's what needs to happen with bullies, for sure. There's got to be something done. They've got to be not just re- help rehabilitated. They've got to be arrested. But, of course, there's always a caveat to the uh, rehabilitation of anybody. It doesn't matter what age they are. And that is that you will never, ever, no matter how hard you try or how intuitive or how well you get to know that person, how they work, you will never ever in your entire lifespan be able to change a soul rehabilitate a damned person unless that person themselves are looking to grow to change and they're willing to accept help in their endeavors to change and to grow to rehabilitate that person that individual person that you're trying to rehabilitate and help you can't help them unless they're willing to accept that help and they are themselves truly committed full in heart and mind and soul to actually change themselves and rehabilitate and grow that's the only way otherwise you're wasting your damn time and so in that system there that i suggest should be implemented obviously since they're you know they're youth you need to be able to dedicate and give them a lot more chances with the whole rehabilitation before officially just saying okay they're lost cause they're, we're wasting too much time. You know, they're a wormhole for our time, money, and resources at this point. So they're a lost cause. We'll write them off and they can just be the idiots that they are, you know, because apparently they're determined to be. And so it would suck, but that's what you would do. And that's true for anybody in the prison system if it was actually back to rehabilitation primarily. But as long as it's youth, you need to, de- like I said, you need to give them a lot more chances to rehabilitate, and to work with them. But once they, you know, if they keep, you keep doing that persistently off and on again, keep trying to help them and, you know, rehabilitate and fix themselves and get past their trauma and not be a dick. And it just never goes anywhere. No matter, say if you give them like, I don't know, say eight to 12 different chances for somebody who got imprisoned for bullying when they were, and killing somebody when they were 14. And now they're, you know, 18 and you've given them 8 to 12 chances over the course of that time to really dedicate time to work with them, and they just have not been willing to be worked with, you write them off as a lost cause. You're just going to let them be a criminal at that point. You're just going to only see them as a criminal now, not as somebody who could be a criminal who would be rehabilitated because of their background. No. They're no longer belly, you know, you just automatically be like, all right, for the rest of their life, they're going to be seen only as a criminal and not as someone who can be rehabilitated because they're just, we've wasted so much time, money and resources on this one person and it's a lost cause. They're a lost cause. They're a wormhole for that. So they can go fuck themselves. I guess they're just going to be stuck being this way. 
you know, it sucks. You don't want to do that, but you got to at some point. Obviously, with the, you know, the adults, the older they are especially, I mean, the less chances you're going to give them. So, you know, consistent repeat, adults, you, at most maybe five, but you're probably going to give them more likely, like, a max of your typical, stereotypical rule of three, three strikes, and you're not going to get another chance anymore to be rehabilitated or helped. But because it's youth, you want to spend, you want to, like, do at least two times, probably more like three or four times more. Uh, chances for them because they're developing because they're growing up and because especially if they have that kind of traumatic background that causes them to kind of vent the same way they experience it makes sense to to give them way more chances especially considering it's a lot more difficult to help people work through their trauma especially if they're a kid it's going to help it's going to be so much more challenging difficult and tough to be able to break through that shell of theirs and actually help them. And even if you do break through it, to be able to coax them into a state where they're actually going to be willing to go through that trauma again with you to work it out and figure it out and learn different ways to go through it and vent and learn from it and all that other stuff. So that's another reason why youth need a lot more chances than adults. Now, that said, and I know this for a fact is I experienced it. I heard it firsthand. I've seen it firsthand. Um, and also I've gotten it secondhand from teachers and some administration, usually just the teachers. Uh, when the school district is like, the only thing you're allowed to do is talk to the parents of the bullies and the bullied kids. Great. Give them a nice stern talking to. Same with the kiddos. And that never, ever works. It never works. I've never heard a single case anywhere in the nation in its history where that ever worked. Where you have, you call on the parents as a teacher and you're talking to them about their kid bullying. Trying to figure out, you know, and get a feel for like the parents as well to see if they might be the same in a way or if they actually care or not. Well, usually when it's actually a case of the bullies well, being on that 50% or more of the bullies where they're going through the same thing with their parents, the parents show they don't give a flying fuck. And they'll come up with every excuse in the book to try and be like, well, it's a po- it's 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 not a bad thing because, insert excuse here, or, oh, it's actually a good thing that they're bullying because, or it's not bullying technically because they're what they're really doing is blank. Or, how do you know if they're not just simply doing self-defense? Or, and this is the most common one I always heard, was that the parents always be like, well, how do you really know that it's not the other kid that's the bully? Because as far as I can tell, it's obviously that kid that's bullying them. They're the they're the one who's intentionally trying picking on them to the point where of course they're gonna fucking punch him out because what do you expect to do? Obviously they're pissing him off because they they're just constantly making fun of him and stuff. It's like you wish, you know. And it's like when you're a bullied kid and you hear that shit, you instantaneously know that the parents don't give a fuck and all they're doing is backing up their kid, being like them, doing the same shit. They're excusing it and being like, no, no, please. Please, my child, continue to be me. Continue to be a dick. Continue to bully and abuse people. And then deflect. Project it onto somebody else. That's literally the signature of these people. It's not always the case in terms of that latter example, but it's most typically the case. And especially in my, in my experience, that's consistent with what you hear. Uh, not only from me growing up through that and hearing that most consistently, but actually experiencing and hearing that from other kids who had who are now like in our 20s like me and have talked about it and expressed that that's basically the most common excuse that they heard from those kind of parents and guardians but that's that's that most what they'll do if they do anything they conscript their teachers of the bullied kid to go out there and be like i need to talk you need to give a stern talking to those parents and in in those kids but give them a nice light little casual questioning you know, that's the best you can do. And hope that they actually heed the advice of getting their kids and themselves under control. Which they damn well know doesn't fucking work. They knew before they even suggested that to parents. They know that's not going to work 99% of the time. Because it just fucking doesn't. That's how the kid, a lot of those kids get that way. It's because their parents are the same way. So in other words, their parents are also encouraging it and excusing it. Because they literally don't give a fuck. 
They're not gonna do a damn thing. They don't give a shit. They love the fact that the kid's like a spitting image of them at that point. Carrying on the legacy of being an angry ass motherfucker who's punching the shit out of everybody. You know? This is ridiculous. But that's all they do. And it never does anything. Never changes a thing. And the point being is that obviously if those bully kids are going through those kind of parents, those parents need to be like the schools, the teachers, whatever, need to start reporting these parents and then what the kids are doing therefore to the police as suspicion of child abuse. So that that way they can then launch a, a covert investigation into that family and that household and see if maybe the same shit is happening. And then if it is, guess what? Obviously, those parents, they're going to be charged because they're adults. They're going to be charged fully to the fullest extent of the law for child abuse and harassment and probably destruction of property and just a billion other charges that they can easily charge them with, especially if you want to throw the book at it, which I hope all police would do is throw the full book at the parents that are like that. Probably wouldn't happen in the United States, but it would be great if they did. But yeah, then you have the parents arrested for that. Unfortunately... And also, fortunately, the kid then gets taken by CPS, Child Protective Services. And at least for that time, they're actually decently defended and protected from potential abusers. Although CPS does have some of their own, like, everywhere, pretty much, seems like these days. They have a bunch of idiots. But, you know. And then they're likely going to be put into some kind of a home, or at least... If they're not going to put into a foster home yet, they're at least going to go through these different care facilities with CPS where they're going to have psychologists and stuff there, therapists, to be able to help try to get them to talk it out and to be able to help figure them out and rehabilitate them and, you know, try to get them to not be basically their parents too because of the trauma and let them know that that's not okay and that what they went through wasn't okay you know, basically be there as support and stuff like that. And then at that point, yeah, instead rehabilitation is, instead of arrest, is a good thing. But again, that's that's the case of if that kid doesn't end up sending another kid to the hospital with a bad wound or potentially ending up actually maimed or killed or paralyzed or something. Like, that's, if, if those more severe things happen, then you got to arrest the kid as well. You just, you got to do it, at least juvenile. But I'd say once they're 12 or older, so from 12 years old kids onward, they need to be charged as adults for those kind of those kind of results of their of their bullying. I don't care if it is because of the fact that they've been, you know, through that through that shit. They're still gonna get that you know ultra dedicated and extra rehabilitation if this all goes as it should the way I'm expressing it, in prison, adult prison, as a kid, but at the very least, you're, you know, at that point, they're being properly and adequately charged for the fact that they killed and or paralyzed and or maimed somebody via their actions. So that way you can, you know, they have a lot more leniency and a lot more working with them than they would any of the others in an adult prison, obviously. So if that kid gets rehabilitated or shows good signs of that and that they're dedicated to rehabilitating Though they have a good chance out there on their own now that, you know, well, with a, another family or whatever, or guardians, then, you know, yeah, that would that would be great because then all of that and showing that they're, they made so much progress, at that point, you would potentially put them on parole or lower their sentence or something would be really good. Or, at the very least, have them consistently come to, like, a CPS or some kind of facility with that new guardian or foster parent or whatever to consistently keep track of the progress they're making personally with the rehabilitation and everything. I think that would be an ingenious and great idea. Or somewhere where at least you have some person who's very familiar with that person, whether it's a corrections psychiatrist or therapist, or it's a a CPS, again, psychologist, psychiatrist, or therapist, whatever they are, that's been with them through the rehabilitation process most of the time, if you can get somebody like that in there for these kids at that point that are on like this quote unquote parole type of thing, or maybe if they aren't on parole, but they're kind of like on the rehabilitation equivalent, if you would, that you would invent for that, for these kids, which would be that basically you have to mandatorily take, have those guardians or foster parents take the, the kids in 
to the facilities, whatever facilities they are, and be able to have them work together and have at least the parents and that person observe and take notes and make sure, you know, track that progress that that kid's making outside of the jail. And then, you know, if they consistently make progress and they're consistently doing better and better and they're consistently showing less and less signs of trauma and less and less signs of being triggered and stuff and more and more kindness and all the other stuff, then at that point, I would say that however long after that that is, you would be able to take them off of this quote-unquote parole thing. Not that you wouldn't keep checking in with them just less often, but you would at the very least be like, all right, you're on your own now, and we're trusting you to keep going and keep doing this you know, stuff for yourself to grow and be a better person, to rehabilitate fully. And that would be, I think, really fucking important and a genius, perfect idea to, to do with these kids that are bullies in those kind of situations after that kind of a sequence has occurred. But if they're not really progressing enough or much, then, you know, you keep giving them chances and eventually, I mean, if they're making any kind of progress and it, even if it's really incremental and really tiny and slow, at least they're progressing. So at that point, I would, I would still be giving them those chances, but you're going to be less and less likely to give them more chances if they're not really making any progress at all. Even if they made an incremental bit of progress, even midway through the chances, but it's super minute, and they're still pretty resistant, then at that point, you know, you're still going to, you're going to treat it as if they didn't make that progress, and you're going to continue to deteriorate the amount of chances you're going to give them, until eventually they burn through them all, and you're just like, all right, we're not going to try and rehabilitate you anymore, because you're, you're just determined to be bitter about things, so we've tried, We've worked with you constantly. We've given you, you know, however many chances they've given. And it's like, you're done. we're done with you now. Don't want to be able to give up on you, but we are. Because you're just, you're a logistics nightmare for us. Because we can't fix you when you're not willing to be fixed, basically. And, you know, you're a wormhole for our time, our money, our effort, our resources. And we have other kids that are actually rehabilitating they're actually willing to be helped and so we're going to focus on them now and you're not going to get any more chances so you're on your own you know and at that point that basically assures that that person is going to stay imprisoned for however long their sentence was so say they got in prison at 12 and they just don't make any progress and by the time they're 18 they're like all right you've explained your chances and they still have four years left on their imprisonment they get to stay there until they're 22 then they get released because they served their sentence. Like, that to me is the most logical solution and choice here for bullies. And obviously, like I said, the reason why I didn't really talk much about the bullying parents or guardians is because of the fact that it's pretty straightforward. You're just going to treat them like a typical adult. You're going to fully charge them. Obviously, they're adults. They're going to be charged as adults. And they're going to end up being imprisoned for child abuse and all this other stuff. So obviously, yes, you're going to... It's straightforward and automatically, blatantly obvious exactly what you're going to do with the the uh, parents, the adults, the the guardians, the whatevers they are that they have at home. And so there's no special circumstances for those whatsoever. It's just automatically you know exactly how that's going to work with them. That's why I don't talk about them, even though they're also bullies too, but they're... What, bullies become officially considered abusers, legally and otherwise, when they're, uh, when they're adults. And not in school. Because that makes total sense. But <laughs> why not? But then that would be a different topic to start going on about. What is with English? Yeah. So it's it's it just needs to happen. I mean, it's it's just so... Uh, there's no way you can put it into a description. Or use... There's no words out there in existence that would be able to describe how wrong and immoral and just fucked up it is. That there's this wave of increasingly... Decreasing in size, wave of kids that are getting killed, literally outright murdered by other kids, by bullies. And it's also because of the fact that there's no intervention whatsoever and nobody in the school system of the United States gives a flying fuck. Which, by the way, is a perfect piece of proof that they don't, not, they don't just not give a flying fuck about you as a parent or guardian, whoever you are. They don't give a flying fuck about anybody in the system. They don't give a flying fuck about the kids. They clearly don't give a fuck about the teachers. They don't give a fuck about anybody. They just don't care. As long as they can industrialize, program your brain to be an industrialized 
you know, mind to be like, I have to work for my picket fence, quote unquote, American dream and slave till I die for corporations. Yay. Cog in the systems are amazing. It's the only way to live is with American crony capitalism. You know, as long as you learn that old school, archaic system we have in place that was birthed of and at the same time as the USDA meat grading system was birthed because industrialization I mean the fucking the fucking US school system is almost as old as the as the nation itself is it's obscene it's basically yeah it's about 200 years old the American school system the way it works it's literally just to program us into an industrial mind, basically like a robot, so that we work for the American capitalist system. We stay as a cog in that system, even if it takes till the day we die. That's all they care about. That's why our school system's that way. And that's why literally the grading systems consistently, at least on the national scale, are mandated to be the exactly the, the, exactly the same thing as USDA meat grades. So when you say USDA grade A beef, that's the exact same thing and the exact same grading system that you have in the American school system. That's why when your kid gets an A, they're literally looked at kind of like a slab of meat. They're like, oh, yeah, so they're, they're grade A meat. Great, great. Grade A meat from the industrial nation that is the United States. We're the corporatists. Yay! More meat for the for the fire. More More fuel for the... For the profiteering. Yippee. You know, it's fucked up in itself, but... I mean... It's just ridiculous. Again, how I got to that is by expressing it that this in itself, the bullying stuff, and the fact that they don't do anything, don't intervene, and don't care even after these kids get die, they don't do anything about it. And they don't. They try to resist, at least. Some of them give in. Most of them don't. Most of them are just like, what do you just do about it? We don't give a fuck. You know, without saying we don't give a fuck, they're literally saying we don't give a flying fuck about you, your kid, and nothing. Great, your kid died to one of our bullies. Why? What the fuck do you expect us to do about it? Why do you think we should give a fuck? Like, it literally proves they don't give a shit about a damn person. And certainly a damn kid. They do not care. No matter how many times they try to tell you they do, they blatantly do not. That's the sick thing about it. This is a perfect way, another perfect way to look at it and see that it's proof in the pudding of that. They don't give a fuck about your kids. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about teaching anybody anything. They just want to program you to be a nice little cog in the system slave to the corporate world and not question it. That's the point. That's what they teach you that they do. All the same stuff over and over again. Just at advanced levels, quote unquote, that you're never going to use. You're going to forget because it's just not useful to 90% of us unless we're going to some specialty industry. But then I could go into talking about the school system itself and why it's invalid and fucked up and why nobody really should put their kids through school in the first place. You're going to school them, homeschool them. Don't fucking do it in the way that the curriculum is requiring you to, though. Ignore the curriculum. Potentially get yourself arrested for supposed neglect because you didn't put your kid through the insert your kid into the school system and you didn't put them through the industrial curriculum, the national curriculum, and therefore it's somehow it's abusive when it's not. It's actually abusive to put your kid through it because then they can't be kids because they're spending all the time constantly in school and then as soon as they get out of school, they're immediately working. A lot of times they're still in school when they start working because you, they make sure that the wages are always two times higher than the cost of living so that you barely can scrape by. Then you take up two jobs, still in school, then you go into debt for college, thinking it's going to help you get a better job, and it doesn't for most of us. And you just wasted your money and gave them more of your money for the fact that you were fooled into thinking it was actually going to help you at all. Fucking ridiculous. But again, I highly recommend you go listen to my podcast Let's Talk video on Macam, one of my other channels that I haven't posted to now in like two years. I definitely recommend checking it out. Again, link in the description. It's also in the cards up above on the upper right-hand corner with the I. Talking about the U.S. school system. And I highly recommend you check that out. Especially if you, uh, I don't know, learn anything new or are into this topic here itself. And then they should 
that and then this will tie into each other, actually, I think, pretty fucking impeccably. And you'll be able to get a really broad spectrum idea and perspective of how fucked up our system is for education in the United States. They call it top tier. They call it best in the world. It's definitely the opposite of that. It's fucking shitty as hell. And there's so much wrong with it, and they refuse to change it. And it's just fucking wonderful that we're wasting all of our lives away in this kind of system. Where now also we can be fucking bullied literally to death. And they just sit there and act like nothing happened. And then when you finally get their attention, they're like, what do you fucking expect us to do about it? You can go fuck yourself. We don't fucking care. Shut up. Move on. Because we're not going to do jack shit. You know, it's just fucking stupid. Like, why are we so willing to waste our lives away with this shit? Why? If we're so fucking intelligent and we're advancing... Why do we, why, why are we willing to pretend that this is a valid thing, that this is a good thing to do, or that this is a system that works well and that's one of the best, when that's verifiably false? I don't get that. Via our own personal experiences and other people's experiences, it should be proof in the fucking pudding we're wasting our lives away with this shit. So, it would prove the opposite. We're not intelligent, and we're not advancing. We're regressing, and we're just happy to... Or, actually, even if we're not regressing, we're at least staying stagnant. Just sitting in the same spot, pretending, and giving ourselves this illusion that we're watching of, see, we're going forward. No, we're not. We're pretending we are. We're playing make-believe for ourselves, for our own comfort. Which is fucking stupid. I don't know. I could rant all day about this kind of stuff, but... I'm going to, uh end it here i guess so hope you guys learned something hope you guys check out the whole school system talk which by the way isn't remotely as long as this because i actually in my rarity was actually like really on point and was really thorough and fluid in my flow going subject to subject without actually or rather a uh, point to point without jumping subject to subject like a lot of times i do or finding the correlations and spurring off or repeating myself or whatever else i did a really good job of that and i'm really happy with myself for it so at least i think it was like 30 minutes i could actually be completely wrong could be like an hour i think it's like 30 minutes though but 20 something 30 it's somewhere between 25 and 30 minutes i think long but anyway i highly recommend you go check that out it should tie into this pretty well and uh yeah i hope you learned something from this and i hope people finally get so fucking loud that they have no choice but to actually completely change the school system and especially, at the very least, do something about bullies and actually be able to rehabilitate them and or just say, okay, fine, we're charging you with murder, we're charging you with manslaughter, we're charging you with, with assault and all this other stuff, and you're going to be imprisoned and you're going to be in a nice cold cell as a kid through the early parts of your adulthood. Hope you're happy with yourself, you know, like... That's that's what needs to fucking happen. There need they, I hope this fucking happens where enough people get loud enough together that they're forced against their will to have to alter it so that same with the police system that the police have to be willing to do these investigations to these families and actually charge these kids with crimes even if it's just in a juvenile system rather than an adult Either way, fucking implement it, punish them for it, while giving them a lot of extra chances at true, proper, adaptable rehabilitation where people are truly dedicated to figuring out how these kids work, figure out how they think, figure out how they're feeling and how they go about life and these other things and quantification and all that. So that way you can figure out how they work and thus be able to adapt to that kid individually on a very personal basis to be able to get the most out of rehabilitation and helping them out and helping them grow to be a better person and grow away from this trauma and everything. It's just got to fucking happen. I mean, it's inexcusable that so many people's kids are now dying or getting paralyzed or maimed because they're a bully's tar favorite target. <sighs> That's it for this, as I keep saying. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, I hope something changes. hope you learned something, and I hope to see you guys in whatever the next thing on this channel may be. Stay safe, stay fluffy, have a good night out wherever you are, and don't be a fucking dick to people. For the love of God, please. 
be nice to each other. 